X570. A little bit of a love-hate with it. So here's, here's my problems with X570. It's more so with the way AMD released everything. So I like AMD, but I did not like this release. They wanted to give us little information about the boards, availability, everything on launch day. They had a lot of boards. Not tons of high-end processors, but a lot of boards. And pricing wasn't available. Um, people weren't getting review samples. People had to source pictures. And, you know, I made a purchase, and this board should be fine, but... I probably would have chose a different board had I had more information available to me. So this board was $215 before the discount off for Micro Center, and it's fine. But the problem is, is that there's other boards with different features, maybe, uh, with different VRMs that maybe I would have wanted considered. But the information wasn't available at launch, so that kind of sticks. But regardless, this is an MSI board. It is the X570 Gaming Edge Wi-Fi. I've not had a, car, a computer with built-in Wi-Fi, so that's definitely a plus. And honestly, as long as it powers my 3900X well without overheating VRM, I'd probably just keep it, to be honest. It's fine. But let's go ahead and open her up and take a look at all the features, IOs, and all the good stuff. So I've actually opened it. Just I wanted to take a look at it, but that was when I was still at the store. So, oh, got the board there. We have driver. That actually could be useful on launch day, so don't chuck this. Wi-Fi antennas. Uh, registration, stickers. SATA cables, um, daisy chain, addressable RGB. I'm curious what, what, I know what that is, like deep cool and stuff like that use this connector. This is addressable. Um, two SATA cables. Uh, normally I would chastise them, but with MVME becoming very popular and M.2, it's, it's honestly fine. Uh, more, uh, these are sticker labels, I guess. Yeah, you can like label your... I guess whatever. Uh, we have a M.2 or MVME screw. Good there. We have installation guide. We have another, I think, is this a second MVME? Yeah, two MVME, I guess, connectors. More registration stuff. Uh, booklet. You know, just, it comes with everything you're going to need. It's, it's fine. I don't have a problem with what they include. Uh, this is a, a hair over $200 at launch. Um, I don't know if the price is going to change at all, but I, like I said, $215, $215 excuse me, before uh, pricing adjustments and discounts from Micro Center. So, its VRM says that uh, it can handle 12 core, 16 core might need additional airflow, is what it said. So, it is a 4 plus 2. So, how that's designed. And let me see here. Eh, I can kind of see why. So it's the VRM. It's, I don't, it's not the VRM itself. It's, it's the way this is designed. It's not ideal. So I've learned a couple things. Um, Buildzoid, uh, actual hardware overclocking. So this has uh, six here. So there's actually one VRM per unit here. And there's four here. So... I don't think they advertise it this way, but they probably say like a, like an A plus two, and it's not. And how you can tell is one, two, three, four doublers for the VRM. So these are all for the VRM, and then one here. So it's essentially, I guess, a four plus one for the SOC, which uh, it's fine for for what this is. But the problem is, is with the with the way this heatsink is designed, I don't think uh, you need a little bit of cooling if you're going with like a 16 core. So keep that in mind. Uh, we have one fan header, two fan headers, and we have three, four, five, six across the bottom. We have USB 3 here, USB 3 here, six SATA ports, 24 pin. We have regular RGB here, addressable here, addressable up here, regular here, so that's good. Uh, it has an extra four pin that's completely 100% useless. Uh, as uh, you know, Bill's already said, this can do 384, this cannot do 384, this 
cannot do 384, having that does absolutely nothing. And I, I completely agree with him. Uh, you have your extra uh, chipset fan. So this piece itself is very expensive. Um, the X570 chipset for PCI Express Gen 4. It's probably two or three times the cost of previous chipsets. That's why these boards are so expensive. But let's do this while we're on camera. Oh, yes. There we go. Let's talk about I.O. So, BIOS flash button, that's very useful. We have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven USB. Perfect. USB type C, love it. Absolutely love it. Um, 7.1 surround. Uh, and in the Wi Fi, I think that'll be actually pretty cool. I can find some some use for that in the long run. But uh, overall, this board is, is fine. I'll, I'll give you my final thoughts here based off the intro, but um, we're going to test it out and see how well it does. So, my thoughts. A lot of it's going to depend on its performance, so stay tuned to 3900X. If I have some limitations I'm not expecting, I'll mention it. And, and that review should actually be out by the time you see this. From a feature standpoint, it's fantastic. It has all the features that mainstream uh, people are going to want that has, you know, uh, LEDs all around here. A lot of things light up. It has an MVME lightning piece right here. It's, it's fine. It, my problem with this purchase is, for me, it's really about uh, getting the best performance. And I found that there's a couple other boards in this price point that have either better VRM cooling or slightly better VRMs. And that was my mistake because there's a lot of boards available and some of the information wasn't available until about the time that I got everything. Um, but if I make a change in the future, I'll definitely let you know. Uh, if you liked the video, liked it, dislike, dislike, uh, leave a comment, get subscribed. X570 boards will be in the description below. I got one more board to review that I'll start in the benchmarks. Hopefully, again, you guys have seen that already. Uh, Steve from PC Budget Solutions, and I'll see you all later on down the road.